need to figure out a way to say one thing into one microphone and another thing into the other microphone. <laughs> Mess with people's minds. So OPB. Uh, sometimes you'll be listening and they'll be having a really interesting discussion and they'll break in and say, uh, this is a previous recorded session, don't bother calling in. This isn't quite that bad, but tonight's thinking outside the framework, I'm trying to try and do it compressed. And so uh, we kicked it off on the mailing list and most of the meat, or a lot of it has been done previously. So real quick rundown, uh, looking at some code that does typo correction. Uh, like you might have for a texting interface or something like this. Um, there w the gag was um, it's a typo thing to make a virtual keyboard that your iPhone's camera can do and you can type. People make a lot of typos because there's not really keys. So you need to come in, look them up in a dictionary, and suggest corrections to it. Um, the code uh, went for, to Wikipedia for the algorithm for edit distance, also called uh, Levenstein distance to figure out how far two words are apart, how many edit changes you'd have to do to convert one word into another. Um, an omitted letter, that's one keystroke. An extra letter, you doubled something, that's one distance. It counts the same. Uh, it does not count transpositions. That's actually two edits, a deletion and an insertion. Um, but it's a reasonably good way to do it. And there's code on Wikipedia that shows you how to do it. Um, actually, can we, uh, no, no, actually, go, if we go to the code. Yeah. So go to typo RB. OK, so the computation says that we have two strings and two indices. And um, let's see this. OK. Um, uh, let's see, when the links. Uh, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. Oh, when we hit the end of the string, then the two indices give us our distance. Otherwise, what we do is we consider a deletion, we consider uh, an addition, or we consider uh, a substitution, which may involve just leaving the character alone. This cost function here says if they're equal, the cost of changing A to an A is zero. If they're different, then the cost, etc. And we're downcasing. Um, because we're going to be case insensitive. Um, so we take the minimum of these, whatever the shortest thing that will get us in, and that is straight out of Wikipedia, and it works. If you type in one word and wait a minute, it does it. Um, on the test data that was provided, um, I started this running last week when I proposed it. It is not finished. It is not close to finishing. And uh, some, I'm not a UX person, but I, there's some belief that that's not fast enough. So the problem is, is that this recursive routine is going to wind up comparing the same substrings. Oh, these don't match, and they still don't match, and they still don't match again, and they still don't match again a lot of times. So uh, one thing we can do, if we go over to typo one, um, woo. Type of one RB. Um, a day or so afterwards, I posted this. It has a hash, and it says, I'm going to initialize that to empty, and then I get called with a certain set of args, and I memoize those things. So that if I'm being asked to compute something I've already computed, I just return the pre-computed answer. I don't recurse off. Because if I'm recursing on something I've done, each of the sub things is also going to be redone. With this, it finishes in a day or so. Um, so it's not the month-long slog that it would have been. The challenge was to make it faster. And I think we figured out, uh, I had figured out it needs to be a um, couple million times faster, I think. I'm not sure exactly. But many orders of magnitude faster. Um, I noticed several people cloned the directory. Did anybody get anywhere with optimizing this? Anybody? OK. So I'm going to tell you what you need to do to optimize it. 
Um, the first thing is you need to read more than just the top page of the Wikipedia. If you scroll down a little bit, it says, while this is canonically correct and it does the thing, it's hideously inefficient for the aforementioned reason. And there's various other better algorithms. If you just go and get the better algorithm, um, you can cut it down to 14 seconds from over a day. Okay? Um, and the better algorithm does this optimization even better because here we're passing around doing all these strings. It turns out as you go across the string, you're going to be looking at the same letters over and over again. And you can do something called dynamic programming, which how many people know? Anybody? Okay, some people. So the deal with dynamic programming is you say, um, I'm going to have a base case that is my 0, 0 case, like I'm comparing two empty strings. Okay? Then I'm going to say, OK, if I increase that, I have one character strings. What does that look like? And I start building an array out here with the base case up as one corner. I'm doing this from your perspective, upper left for you guys. And then you grow out and you make it so that each element is a function of the adjacent elements. So you can do it almost like a finite state or like a, um, a cellular aut automata where you're just looking at the adjacent cells and doing simple calculations, and you grow it out to the point where you need to be. Uh, that's something you ought to have in your bag of tool tricks. Um, the algorithm doing that way gets it to 14 seconds, and we might think that's great. Wow, cool. Um, by the way, the things I'm going to be talking about here are in the repo on a branch called um, some optimizations, I think. There's another, if, what is that called? Same repo from the email. Can you, is this a touch thing? Um, yeah, some optimizations. OK, um, so if anyone wants to look, we're not going to go through the code because I'm trying to go through this pretty quick tonight. Um, the other thing is, does anyone have any idea how you would optimize what might be bad cases for this, for a type of correction? What? Counter examples, such as? Oh, yeah. Word. What? Reverse word. Reverse word. Um, yeah, but that's changing the scope. The counterexample things, and actually, that's my punchline, so I'm going to skip past that a little <laughs> bit. OK. Um, and actually, there's, there's, there's three punchlines here, so that's, that's, that's a hint at one of them. Um, so some of the things that this did were really dumb, like it reads the dictionary for every word. It reads it from disk. That's inefficient. You can get rid of it. Turns out that makes very little difference. Um, initially. The algorithmic change makes a huge difference. The next thing is we're checking for every word they type in, we're checking every word in the dictionary to see how far they are in taking the best. Many times people will type a word that's really a word and we could just check to see if it's in the dictionary and not go find the best match. Yeah. Well, can you also divide the dictionary up um, into a tree structure? You could. I mean, like that's, that's I didn't. So the problem with the tree structure thing, and I did, I did a, one of the programs in here does a, um, a, a, a step towards that direction, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, coming up with a better data structure for the dictionary um, is, is definitely one of the big wins here. So we can get a 25% if we skip real words. Um, yeah? That that's so the question is if something is in the um, most common words do not suggest things if we find something that's three away in the most common words do we look for an uncommon word that's only one away okay okay um, and actually so there's I'm going to kind of get rid of one of my punchlines. There's a whole bunch of things you could do that way. And if we went that way, if I were doing the longer version, the thing I was going to add is the constraint is, and also make them non-offensive. Because it turns out, and this is one of the things that was this big revelation with typo corrections, you can get all sorts of efficiencies if you look at patterns of real texts and real things that people actually say to each other and do predictive stuff. And if you just do predictive stuff and you guess that's what other people are saying, they'll be really offended because they don't use words like that. Um, 
It's amazing how many people don't use words like the words that we most frequently use, apparently, in texts. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't know whether there's probably some psychology <coughs> lurking under the surface there. Um, don't. Yeah. And how offensive that can be. Yeah. Um, my, there's a story in my family, just as far as the texting thing goes. Um, my, my mom is, um, is 80 with rounding error, and she was texting to my wife, I found your Frisbee, it had landed in the Bogan Vias. And I'm a pretty open-minded guy. I will not tell you what the text thing came out for that. Um, it was like, my gosh, that was, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, but apparently bougainvilleas aren't, and frisbees and things aren't discussed as frequently as some other things. Um, so um, the skipping real words, though, cuts down the number of times we have to look in the dictionary. Yeah? Well, another thing, it seemed to me, if you're going to do it, <coughs> the problem is a keyboard. And you've got to include numbers and semicolons. Yeah. And what I thought is to first sort things by Yeah, yeah. You can do a lot better than the edit distance function here. Um, but this, uh, what I wanted for this is something I can do short if we had a lot of content, which we do, or could expand out if we didn't have a lot of content. And yes, there's all there's another interesting case: things that aren't words. We think like we type in words. A lot of the things we text aren't actually words, and we're not trying to make them words. Um, Oh, as soon as they start, as soon, yeah. A right. Yeah. Well, another thing that got us um, in, let's see, typo five in this branch, um, cut the ser searching. Don't even bother checking a word if you've already found words that are better than it could possibly be. So the distance, of, difference in length tells you it's got to be at least that many characters distant. Um, so if you've already got something better, don't bother checking it. Um, another optimization that got another 30% was stop checking. In mid-checking of a word, if this word is more distant than our so far best, don't even bother. Just stop, abort the checking, go on to the next word. And then an order of magnitude, and this gets back to the tree structure thing, if what we do is we um, have a structure that is optimized for words that start with the same two characters, words that are off by one character, or words that are you know, a character, they forgot the second character and third character, those three cases, and look for things that are off by one letter first. That got us a huge speed up because many typos are small. And large typos we're not likely to find anyway. Um, and then the next thing, which got us another other factor of two, uh, micro-optimizations, things like moving variables outside of a loop, moving, uh, downcasing in this thing here. Every time I look at this character, I'm downcasing that character and the character I'm comparing it in. I'm looking at those tens of thousands of times I'm going to downcase them. If I downcase the strings and work on a downcased copy of the string, uh, I can save all that. Um, so the final result um, ran in 0.365 seconds. Um, and most of that was actually the startup time of the program and loading the dictionary, which you could get, you know, and actually making the somewhat smarter data structures. The code is up there on this thing and that thing. If anyone has any questions or wants to follow up, um, let me know. But I had promised I would keep this short, and I think I'm at the limit of my short time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it now. Ping me offline for questions. Oh. <laughs> I have trained you guys so well to just, yeah, ignore me. OK, yeah. <laughs> I just asking, you said the most optimized one is that typo 9? Is, is oh, is that typo 8 and uh, typo 9 are indistinguishable. Typo 9 um, theoretically should be better. And what it does is it does, uh, for the data set, you don't, it doesn't show it. But it's doing more work building the smart data structure. And so it should be faster per word. So on a larger copus, it would be better. Um, but yeah, typo 8 and typo 9 are the like third of a second. OK. Any other non-questions? Good. OK. And thank you all.